Ready Reef Girl here. Welcome to another Arts and Crafts with Reef Girl project. For a long time, I have been fascinated by the idea of growing encrusting corals on things. And that was ever since I first saw the Cyphastria that was grown on a statue of a reclining woman. I thought it was absolutely amazing. So I got myself a couple of things to try. Those of you who follow my channel may know that I've had a Party Crasher Cyphastria and a Hell's Gate Cyphastria on a frag rack for absolutely forever. Well, it's been a couple of months anyway, which is ridiculous. So I finally decided to go ahead and try this. So I got these two resin figurines from Big Al's online. And I was looking for something that was small enough to fit into the limited space that I have available and yet large enough to look significant if I could manage to get the Cyphastria to grow and encrust onto them. These are aquarium ornaments, so I expect that they're reef safe. I'm putting them in Mollywood because quite honestly, I just don't have the space in my other tank. It took me ages to go through hundreds of ornaments to find these two specific ones that I think are going to work really well for this project. I'll put a link in the description if anyone is interested in finding them for themselves. And yes, I committed the rookie sin of not having the video oriented the correct way when I filmed this, and I did not realize it, believe it or not, <laughs> until I put this video together, so I do apologize for that. I tried to do some research into how to get encrusting corals to grow on specific objects that are not rock, and I could find very little information, so I think I'm just going to have to go by common sense and do my best to find a place on each one of these where I can put the Cyphastria that it will receive the proper light and that will allow it to spread out and cover the entire piece. I really don't know what to expect there because they could grow anywhere. They could grow from the bottom down. They could spread out from the center. I really don't know what to expect. And I have a feeling it's going to be largely dependent on light and flow. Let's take a closer look at each one. First off, the smaller one has no holes for water flow. So I'm going to have to do something about that. Probably try to drill or punch or otherwise make openings to get some sort of water flow through here so the water does not become stagnant when I set it wherever I'm going to set it. You can see that the larger of the two pieces does have good openings in it for water flow, so I don't need to do anything to this one. I'm on a bit of a timeline with this project because I want to finish it and have these things in the tank before I leave for holidays. And my husband's not home, so I'm going to have to do this myself and see what kind of trouble I can get into with the drill. All right, I couldn't run an electric drill to save my life. So here's what happens when you don't really know what you're doing. My thinking was the first hole was fine. I, I had no problem punching a little triangular hole right here. It was when I got up into this area, I started having trouble. So I thought I would try and um, drill holes with what was not an electric drill. Yeah, it was this thing. I'm really sorry I didn't film it because I think it might have been pretty hilarious. But being by myself, I was in a hurry and I do apologize. I should have got it on film. Oh. I don't know, but that didn't work, obviously, because I don't have the strength to put behind it. But I did manage to punch a couple of holes with nails and then I thought oh geez I'm going to need one at the very top so I got that one too and I don't know how well we can see it from in here but it does let in light so therefore it will let out water and that's all I wanted was just a way for it not to become completely stagnant so why do we have reef glue we have reef glue to make repairs on stuff like this <laughs> and it doesn't really matter if it looks completely wrecked because like, come on, it's supposed to be under the ocean, right? So I think we're good as far as that goes. I think the water can move through here as much as it needs to. So I'm gonna go ahead and repair this to whatever degree I can using, of course, trusty reef glue. 
and then I will proceed. The thing was in pieces mainly because I had it in the vise on the bench and I was whacking at it with a hammer and nails. So that's kind of why it fell apart. At any rate, the repair was successful. So here I mixed up a bunch of putty. I got my frags, took off the stems from the frag plugs and used glue to glue the putty to the statue. Then I used glue to glue the frag to the putty. And hopefully this will keep everything in place until it starts to grow and encrust. For this one, I decided on a top knot of Party Crasher. I think that's the right place for it. Seeing him in the tank, I think it looks pretty good. You can see there's already a snail checking things out. The first place I tried it was on the sand at the front of the tank, but it just didn't look right. The Hell's Gate Cyphastria is on the statue at the side. I've got it kind of on a little bit of an angle in the back corner, and I think this is a good spot for it. And here's where they are now. The smaller statue is at the top in the middle, and I really like how it looks here. It's quite possible though that it might be a little too much light for the Cyphastria. The other one over here at the side, kind of looking out, keeping an eye on the big tank, so over the next little while, I'll keep an eye on the corals themselves and make sure they're doing okay. You never know how things are going to go and I am going to be replacing this light so things could change quite a lot in the next little while. But this has been a great fun project. Is it cheesy? Oh yes, it's very cheesy, but I kind of think that's why I like it so much. So thanks for watching. As always, I really do appreciate it.